Nico Montano was released from the UFC. And I got to tell you, that's very sad. I mean, I'm bringing you sad news, right? Somebody gets released. That's not great news. Somebody loses their job. We don't take any pleasure in that ever. She got released for missing weight. She'd missed it multiple times. I don't know what that means. I think that means twice, but it was meaningfully spread out. In the last three years, I don't think she's had three contests. But either way, she just missed weight. She was scheduled for 135 pounds, and she weighs in at 143 pounds. And I'm looking at it going, is this the only answer? You, you have a contract for 135. You got to make 135 for that night. If you don't, there's repercussions, right? X percent of your purse based on the jurisdiction you're in. Fight being canceled completely, again, based on jurisdiction. Talk to your opponent. But moving forward, aside from that one night, isn't there just a 145-pound class? Or the 155-pound class? It would seem as though there's somewhere that you go. I realize, right, that girls don't have 155. You get my point, though. You can bring it over to the guys, too. They go, oh, I can't make weight. Well, sure you can. Just a different weight. I mean, I can remember that in wrestling. The heavyweight used to make a joke that I was on the team with. He said, I might be overweight, but I'm not over 265. 265 was the limit. But it's very similar in fighting. There's other weight classes. And I don't know, does, does she dig in and they go, look, this is the only weight class and this is where you're in and, and this is your spot. It would seem as though she could have got ahead of things and said, hey, guys, guess what? I'm a 145 pounder. It would seem. And even if that's not the exact particulars for her situation, of which I'm not privy to, even if it's not, I'm speaking more in a broad stroke for other folks that are missing weight and having trouble. It sounds as though, I don't know if I agree you're missing weight. It just sounds like you need to be in a different weight. And it's very tough. It's a very tough part of the sport. There's only a few things that have to happen for a contest to take place. You got to get the principles, right? Red corner, blue corner. You got to agree on the, uni on the rules, which are going to be unified. You got to agree on the date. And then you got to agree on the weight class. So it's one of those tough spots where there's nobody cold here or being calloused. It's very unique to this profession. I don't know of any other profession where they weigh you in before they allow you to do your job. I don't know of any other line of work like that. But it is an element of this one. It's a very important part that comes all the way down to a punishment, all the way down to a cancellation, and in this case, ultimately, a release of, hey, this doesn't sound like a good place for you. And I only suggest for any fighter that knows they're in that spot, nobody gets surprised with an eight-pound loss. I would just suggest that you give an absolute heads up as quickly as possible. And it sounds as though, moreover, you need to be in a different weight. I was at a Bellator. I shared this story with you guys seven months ago. Top official at Bellator, but a guy came in on short notice. Agreed to the fight. Drove out to the event. Got his paperwork done. Hits the scale. Misses weight colossally. Colossally. He not only didn't make his weight class, he was over the next weight class. So let's just say he was a 25-pounder. He weighs in at 37. So he doesn't make his weight. He doesn't even meet the weight above. He's another weight. On his way out the door, the official who released him said to him, by the way, nickel's worth of free advice, but in the future, if you're ever in this spot, just don't show up. When you get that phone call of, hey, can you do this? And you say yes. Just don't show up. We'd have never held it against you. You could have been out of town, prior engagement. You could have had an injury. We'd never know. This is only a problem that's resulting in your release because you said you could do it. You then wasted everybody's time. You came here, and now we have no ability to put somebody else in your spot. Now, the official did not elaborate and go through all of these words. All the official said is, in the future, little advice here, just don't show up. That's, that's the quote but I'm sharing with you what he meant. And it was some very helpful advice. Just don't show up at all is much better than showing up and not doing what you agreed upon. But moreover, and my only point here, is that if you're in a situation like this, I don't think that it has to mean your time in an organization comes to an end or your time in a sport comes to an end. It sounds as though you just need to change weight classes. There's very few fighters on day one to the final page of their career, are the same weight. It's very common that you move. 
Now, that's a conversation, and based on your organization, they may like, hey, well, look, we're not looking for a middleweight right now. We're looking for a welterweight. We're not just looking for you and offering you a random spot. Can you go, boom, right here? Right? There's some give and take. Just seems that there's still a conversation, and it seems as though there still needs to be a responsibility. And sometimes it's hard to face those things, but you're going to have to face it sooner or later. You're going to face it on the scale. Surprise, I blew it. Or do you want to face it ahead of time and say, look, not only am I not going to be able to do it this one, I don't think I can ever get down. What do you think about me moving up, coach? Seems like a conversation that you might want to have. Meanwhile, when I'm getting that news, I read on another page, Chad Mendes is back, but he is going into bare knuckle boxing. Now, I should have called this one. I should have called this one. We all knew Mendes was coming back because everybody comes back the same. They all start releasing training footage, right? They all start slipping it on Instagram. Look at me, I'm back in the gym. In Mendez's case, I don't know if he's ever looked better. I can tell you this as a literal statement. He has never looked faster. And the only reason I didn't see the bare knuckle coming, I just assumed it was a return to the UFC. I just assumed he still had an active contract. But now that I think about it, in conjunction with the announcement that he's going to bare knuckle, the footage that I did see that I'm bragging to you about how fad Chad was, was on the mitt stand-up. I should have seen that it was boxing. Either way, welcome back, Mendez. And while I'm taking that news in, one more piece of story is Chandler revealed for us his fight with Gaethje could be up in the air. This is Chandler speaking, but he believes that fight's going to be in New York. Chandler believes that New York has a rule about, I think it was entering the state. I don't think it was athletic commission driven. I think it was the state as a whole letting people in that are unvaccinated. Chandler's unvaccinated and said, I'm not ready to get the vaccine yet. I just need a little bit more news. Nobody's going to force Michael Chandler into anything. So let's see where that goes. Let's hope that all gets worked out. If there's a fight I really want to see, it's Chandler versus Gaethje. Does it have to be in New York? Not for me. They could put that thing wherever they want. I'm watching.